if a child asks you, like, how do I believe in the Bible? You kind of back up. You say, how do we know anything's true? And how do we know anything's true? And so, yeah, how would you know George Washington really lived? How would you know Abraham Lincoln lived? So you almost have to start with what are the tests for any document? And then let me show you how the Bible lines up to that. The time between when it was written and the manuscripts we have, the number of manuscripts we have, the archaeological evidence that supports it, the claims it makes. I mean, like uh, I told a story last week at church about the guy who invented chloroform. He was reading in Genesis um, about the fact that when God was making Eve, he first put Adam to sleep. And it struck him as a doctor, like they're sawing up people's legs and arms you know, after, after the wars. And he's like, when God did surgery, he put people to sleep. And so that idea inspired him to come up with what we know as chloroform. But even there, there's a little piece, like how would somebody in the Old Testament know that the human body, the one part of our body that you can remove, if removed properly, a human rib, will regrow itself. Like the, the only something supernatural beyond the culture would know that, that God removed the one part of the human body that grows back. So it's just all kinds of things in the details, in the transcendence, in the archaeological input, in the, in the claims it makes that validate that the Bible is true. It has truly created something that you can study for a lifetime. God has created something you can study for a lifetime and never exhaust. Uh, and so, man, this, this as Christians, Chad, is that, I know this is what you do for your church. You try to encourage people to be students of the Word of God for their whole life. You're always bringing interesting, uh, seemingly unknown stuff. I don't know how you come up with this stuff that I've never heard before. I didn't know that story. I'd never heard that illustration. Or, and, and, and showing how, man, it really is inexhaustible. You can keep diving deeper and deeper and deeper. That's uh, amazing how you do that. But that's kind of your, your push, right? You don't just want to spoon feed people. You want people to get that meat for themselves, right? Yeah, without a doubt. You know, the Bible says it's a living document, right? And so that's kind of how you know the difference between being I'm a Christian versus I'm a religious person who calls myself a Christian. I'm not saying it's every time, but in some sense, you have a sense that the book's speaking back to you. There's someone in there talking to you. And people describe it in different ways, but like, hey, that verse jumped out of me, yeah. or I felt like that was in bold print, even though I read it a hundred times, or I felt like that was really speaking to my situation. So I think that's how you know you're a Christian is the Holy Spirit's in you, and he begins to illuminate the text. He begins to bring it to mind. If there's someone in there chatting with you, it's a very personal process. It also, it's this, it's almost like science. Every time you learn something in science, you learn one thing, and it opens up six more mysteries. Yeah. And the Bible's the same way. You learn something about God, and you're like, well, that's true. The one about this and this and this. It's just a constant moving toward the horizon, new horizons open, move toward that horizon, more horizons open. That's, that's the nature of truth and, and endeavor into truth. 